the headquarters of the ashrama was at Urukonda until 1980. Thereafter, it was shifted to the area where Rishamukha Ashrama was located. That is, to the area called Virupapalagaddi near Hampi, which is a World Heritage Center. Sri Achyut Ashrama incorporates Rishamukha Ashrama, which was founded by Yogi Achyuta. The title Sri Achyut Ashrama bears the name of Yogi Achyuta. Sri Achyut Ashrama thus perpetuates the divine name of Yogi Achyuta. The Ashrama is being maintained on the minimum fees collected from the seekers at the time of Upadesha, that is initiation, and on the annual fee and donations collected from the sadhakas and well-wishers. On special occasions, donations are sought from public. Accounts are audited by chartered accountants at the end of each year and presented to the General Assembly every year. Other than the above, there is no regular source of income to the ashrama at present. In all manners of disputes arising in the ashrama, be they administrative or spiritual, the matter gets referred to the Supreme Council, which automatically comes into being when the need arises. The Supreme Council consists of the Trinity, the Pradhana Guru, the President and the Secretary General. At present the Trinity is Swami Sitaram, I Narayan Swami and B. H. Nadgaur. That is me. In all such disputes, the decision of the Supreme Council is final and binding. The Asama is a non-profit organization. Donation to it are exempted under Section 80G of Indian IT. Activities. Sri Achyut Asama is a unique spiritual institution having the rare Brahma Vidya and Tattva in its repertory. It is with the practice of Brahma Vidya that one acquires spirituality and divinity. This is not verbal but actual and real. Yoga Vidya Sadhana is the royal road that leads the practitioner to the goal of reaching the highest state called Parma Padavi. In this state man acquires spirituality and divinity. By practicing Yoga Vidya an individual becomes a sadhaka and the starting point of it is Upadesha, the act of initiation. Sri Achyutasrama grants Upadesha to the seekers, thus converting them into sadhakas. Upadesha is given by any Upadeshaka, that is the initiator or a guru, recognized by the ashrama. Publishing books, audio and video cassettes covering the fields of tattva and sadhana, now operating a website www.achitasrama.org. Conducting intensive leadership training course ILTC every year from the 5th May to 20th May at the ashrama headquarters. Senior sadhakas are given the necessary training to reach the goal of acquiring spirituality and divinity. Conducting exhibitions giving public talks, visiting sadhakas in their own environs and guiding them. This is mostly done by Swami Sitaram and Behatnad God, that is me. Looking up the headquarters, branches and centers, 
when tattva is the right philosophy, sadhana is the applied philosophy, based on science and technology principles. This needs proving. What also needs proving is the close relationship between yoga vidya and the structure and functioning of the body. To pursue this line of investigation is one of the goals of Sri Achyutasrama. Now branches. Large number of sadhakas clustered in a geographic area can start a branch of obtaining permission. The site acquired and the building built shall be registered in the name of the President Sri Achyutasrama Virbhaparagaddi near Hampi. Such branches are run by local executive committee consisting of president, vice president, treasurer, secretary and five members. The elected term of local EC is three years. They shall generate funds for the expenditure out of which 20% is transferred to the headquarters. The activities of the branches shall be made known to the headquarters and similarly any meeting conducted or any guest invited or any other thing done shall be after seeking the permission of the headquarters. Any branch that works against the established principles of the ashrama shall be disqualified. Any sadhaka whose actions are found prejudicial to the interest of the ashrama and does not pay the statutory annual fee to the ashrama, his membership stands cancelled. The branches operating today are Purvakanda, Anandabad district, Andhra Pradesh, India, Adoni, Karnal district, Andhra Pradesh, India, Guti, Anandapur district, Andhra Pradesh, India, Agasaladini, Karnal district, Andhra Pradesh, India, Gadag, Gadag district, Karnataka state, India, Jagalur, Daungari district, Karnataka state, India, Anandapur, Anandapur district, Andhra Pradesh, India, Nalgonda, Nalgonda district, Andhra Pradesh, India, Hyderabad, Vikarabad and Guntur centers may soon become branches. Nagasamudra center, though ready with one building, is yet to get recognition as a branch. Publications Prathama Tattvarpanam in Kannada by Yogi Achyuta Kai Kalpa Mattu Mukti Sadhane in Kannada by Yogi Achyuta edited by Swami Jaitirtha Antarvani in Kannada by Swami Vijayindra Tattopanyasagalu Kannada by Swami Vijayindra Yoga in Kannada, Telugu, Hindi and English by Swami Jaitirtha. Gita Sudhasara in Kannada by Swami Jaitirtha. Prabhu Yogi Achyuta Tattva Pranale in Kannada by Swami Jaitirtha. Gita Sandesha in Kannada by Swami Jaitirtha. Achyuta Samhite, Kannada and Telugu by B. H. Nadgaud. Yoga Dashna in English by B. H. Nadgaud. Prabhuvani in Kannada and Telugu by B. H. Nadgaud. Shanti Mantargalu, Kannada and Telugu by Swami Jaitirtha and B. H. Nadgaud. 
ऑर्डर कैसेट ऑफ शांति मंत्र आश्रम इज एडमिनिस्टर्ड बाय वेरियस कमिटीज इलेक्टेड फॉर ए पीरियड ऑफ थ्री इयर्स बाय द जनरल असेंबली जनरली द इलेक्टेड मेंबर विल बी सीनियर साधक लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस दम वन हियर इज स्वामी सीताराम अवर प्रधान गुरु ही कम्स फ्रॉम ए प्लेस कॉल्ड उर्वकोंडा इन अनंतपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश ही इज अवर प्रधान गुरु सेकेंड दिस इज आई नारायण स्वामी द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ श्री अच्युत आश्रम ही कम्स फ्रॉम अनंतपुर इट इज ऑल्सो ए डिस्ट्रिक्ट इन आंध्र प्रदेश then this is yes vethal rao immediate past president of the ashrama he comes from adoni in karno district of andhra pradesh then here is our supreme council consisting of three persons it is a statutory body comes into being automatically when there is some dispute to be settled the supreme council consists of only three persons they are the president the pradhan guru and the secretary general so it is not the person who is important but the post the president the pradhan guru and the secretary general at present the three persons who occupy the post are one narayan swami the president swami sitaram the pradhan guru and bihat nadgaur the secretary general then comes the office bearers for the period 2002-2005 the office bearer generally consists of the following one president then vice president and secretary general on joint secretary then a treasurer and general power of attorney holder and member and one more member plus pradhan guru will also be included in the office bearers list now for this period 2002 and 2005 the president is ai narayan swami anandapur andhra pradesh vice president is bb tirakaraddi gadak karnataka state secretary general bihat nadgaur hastak karnataka state joint secretary c krishna ji rao hastak karnataka state treasurer c dharma ji rao balare karnataka state gpa holder and member k prabhakar rao raichur karnataka state and the member is u anjaneyalu gorokonda andhra pradesh plus pradhan guru swami sitaram will also be there then comes the executive committee members they for this period are 
ಎಸ್ ಹೆಚ್ ವಸಂತ ಜಗಳೂರ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಕೆ ನಾಗೇಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಅನಂತಪುರ್ ಆಂಧ್ರಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಕೆ ಡಿ ಕುರಿ ಗದಗ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣಮಾಚಾರಿ ಚೆನ್ನೈ ತಮಿಳುನಾಡು ಕೆ ಪಿ ಮುಕ್ತ ಹುಬ್ಬಳ್ಳಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಕೆ ರಂಗಾರೆಡ್ಡಿ ಗಂಗಾವತಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಬಿ ಮಲ್ಲೇಶಂ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ಆಂಧ್ರಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಪಿ ವಿ ಕೆ ಶರ್ಮ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಜಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಂಧ್ರಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಬಿ ಭೂಷಯ ಚಂದೂರ್ ಆಂಧ್ರಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಗಡ್ಡಿ ಬೆಳಗಾವ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಜಿ ಬಾಪಿನೇಡು ಗುಂಟೂರ್ ಆಂಧ್ರಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಐ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಗುರು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೀತಾರಾಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟರಿ ಜನರಲ್ ಬಿ ಹೆಚ್ ನಾಟಗೌಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಕಮ್ ಸರ್ವೇಸ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ who had some of the most specialized committees of the ashrama the members are like this rb satnarana nalgonda andhra pradesh he is the chairman anadhara patakam d udaya bhaskaram hyderabad he is the chairman publications committee d kodandam heads of specialized committees now the list of the committee members are like this r r b satyanarayana of nalgonda andhra pradesh he is the chairman ಅನಧಾರ ಪತಕಂ ದೆನ್ ಡಿ ಉದಯ ಭಾಸ್ಕರಂ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕೇಶನ್ಸ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ದೆನ್ ಡಿ ಕೋದಂಡಂ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಲೀಗಲ್ ಸೆಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ರಾಮಲಿಂಗಪ್ಪ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಉಪದೇಶಕ ವರ್ಗ ಎಸ್ ಮಹಾಬಲೇಶ್ವರ್ ಜಗಳೂರ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆರೆಮನೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಜಯಂತಿ ಕೋ ಆರ್ಡಿನೇಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿ ಹೆಚ್ ನಾಡಗೌಡ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಒನ್ ದಿ ಟೂ ಸಿಸ್ ನಾಡಗೌಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ದೇರ್ So, Swami Sitaram and I, Naran Swami, will be the special invitees of the committee. Then comes Publications Committee, who are charged with publishing Asram and Literature by way of books, cassettes, CDs and others. now the chairman of the committee is d udaya bhaskaram of hyderabad and the members are k sridhar hyderabad b mallesham hyderabad g bapinidu guntur b koteswar rao hyderabad m srinivas rao hyderabad d raghuveer dottaghatta he is from mississippi usa k ravi kumar he stays at uk united kingdom now then k somanath he lives at new zealand for the time being and then p mahesh he will be 
in Bangalore are delayed. Plus three Supreme Council members. Then here is a group of two persons who are special in the history of Atatasrama because they built the branch of Guti in Anantapur district of Andhra Pradesh. A Guti branch consisting of main building and so many other auxiliary buildings. Having a very extensive land with a compound of its own, a useless land has been converted into a beautiful green area by these two dedicated souls. And they are G. Sambhaya and Srimati Naranamma, his wife. Their efforts is highly commendable. So we can see Sambhaya and Naranamma in the photo along with three Supreme Council members. Now you see another of the wonderful man, K. Futurao. He is a old man only chronologically, but his spirit he is very, very anxious. What is so special about him is that he is the direct disciple of Lord Yogi Achyuta. And out of so many who got initiation from Lord Achyuta, so far as our knowledge goes, it is only Huthurao who is happily surviving and is among us. Though he is past eighty years, he does japa without a break, even today, and then he is physically active, mentally alert, and he can be seen walking miles without any assistance. His bodily functioning is amazingly up to the mark. So he is Sri Huchirao for us. Then of course we have one overseas representative in the person of Raghuvir Reddy's Sodagata. He is in Mississippi, USA and in the global Tapo Vijaya Project 2003. He is the main architect. He has planned and executed, of course, under the inspiration of our Lord Yogi Achyuta, and his sense of duty, dedication, and his alertness and activity defies our understanding. As I referred earlier, he is capable of receiving the signals from our Lord Yogi Achyuta. <coughs> Though he is quite junior in the ashrama, having not seen Yogi Achyuta or not even seen Yogi Achyuta's two important disciples, Swami Vijayendra and Swami Jayatirtha, he is able to decipher the path of sadhana as it should be and it will be in the future time. Many of the facts 
that the seniors are not aware of, are not able to understand. Rahuvir has not only understands, but he is trying to implement them to the best of his ability on the one hand, to the satisfaction of our Lord Yogi Atrata. It is he and three others, that is Ravi Kumar, Somanath and Mahesh, together contributed the computer assembly earlier, are now looking after this global webcast now. All the other members who are not there in the committees, but who are senior enough and who have contributed much for the development of Ashrama, though may not be in the list, but they deserve our kudos and our thanks for having served the Ashrama all these years. Now that for this period of 2002 and 2005, the members that we have presented are working. One factor to be remembered here that all the members in the list or in the committees or otherwise are serving the ashrama at their own expenses. That is, the members, whether chairman or president or anybody, never charges traveling allowances or any other allowance. So far as my knowledge goes, maybe there is only one or two persons who might have taken TA. No other persons since 1950 have been charging anything to the ashrama. It's all voluntary work and they are happily doing it, and we are happy to record the same thing. So this dedication from members who are otherwise highly placed in society, yet serve the society that is called Atukasrama very humbly, and of course with dedication. We pray, Lord Atsuta, to bless the persons who are so much willing and willingly serving the institution to the best of their ability and to our satisfaction as well. Jai Atsuta.
मैसेज फॉर मैन कैन श्री अच्युत आश्रमा इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड टू सर मैन कैन द नेचर ऑफ सर्विस इज डिवाइडेड डिफरेंटली इट इज एक्ट विथ स्केमेटा इन कॉर्पोरेटिंग ए मेथड दैट एनरिचेस ह्यूमन लाइफ एज नथिंग कोड मैन कैंड इज थ्रेटेंड विथ एनिहिलेशन कॉन्फ्लिक्स वॉन्ट एंड डिस्ट्रक्शन एंड वॉर्स हैव रेड्यूज लाइफ टू अनमिटिगेटेड सफरिंग एंड अनसर्टनिटी एट पर्सनल लेवल मैन टूडे इज इन वॉर विथ हिमसेल्फ each organ and each system is working disjointedly and at cross purposes he feels disoriented and misdirected thereby feeling oppressed and miserable life for the individual has become a burden life no longer is an elevating and or exhilarating experience but the crucifixion cross that one is carrying to his golgotha should life be defined in terms of diseases old age and death should the death snatch life cruelty cruelly as though it is a natural phenomenon divinity in man is dimmed satan reigns over all saints godmen philosophers have failed mankind what is their contribution after all do they shape the public to be like them no never they revel in their own glory handed over a set of doctrines or a religion and simply disappeared level of ignorance and superstition how increased they all showed god and liberation contentment and peace in worlds and in more worlds how did anybody become great why did the greats did not reveal the method that rendered them into greatness all such persons have fooled and failed mankind now turn to sri achyut ashrama yogi achyuta has declared that he became a yogi by the practice of yoga vidya and that he is giving the same vidya to the seeker open day that is any practitioner of yoga with efforts and determination can become a yogi and liberated from the crippling limitations of human existence yoga vidya sadhana is the key that opens up divinity in us and can make life eternal life is given to enjoy not to suffer divinity renders life to enter into a peaceful mode buddha shri krishna jesus christ were divine and at peace with themselves were they not born normal did they not become great by great striving and struggling they have rested peace that is great mere worshipment of the great does not make one great in fact worshipment and prayers make man a dependent reality such men never cast off the slavish mentality god is available to those who are in a happy mood the saying anandaradhya parasveshtha means that the absolute is worshiped by being in ananda supreme happiness the weeper and divinity do not gel with each other yoga makes man to attain peace and happiness who says yoga teaches asceticism on the other hand it prescribes enjoyment of bliss even sex is not shunned nothing is proscribed 
except ignorance. Yeah, ignorance. It is ignorance that makes one suffer. Enlightenment liberates and yoga gives enlightenment. Also, supreme self-confidence, never to bow down to anybody and anything stands. Divinity and evility are both facts of life. Choose the better one while controlling the other. Yogi Achyutas Divine Mandate, A-U-M, Om, is simple. Embrace Yoga Vidya. Do it regularly and sincerely. It's a biotechnic device by nature. It is beyond religions and beliefs. Do not be misled by false systems. All the great secretly did it, only that they did not reveal it to others. Now Yogi Achyuta is revealing Om. It is mandatory on our part to take it and do it. Yoga protects man absolutely. It elevates him to divinity. Any society made up of yogic practitioners will surely be benefit, bereft of conflicts and uncertainty. Be God yourself by the practice of yoga. Shiva does it. Vishnu does it. Buddha did it. Should you not do it? What is necessary even to gods should surely be necessary for all. Think and decide now. So many of our past lives are lost. Should we lose this life also? No doubt. Man today is crippled with serious psychosomatic disorders. In fact, diseases and death are dancing around man. Man has fear and he is sick in his soul. Medication does not reach the soul. Sick persons are dangerous to mankind. Yogic practice can dramatically change the life profile of man in one year. If man cannot and will not save himself now and here, and very urgently, he will be shunted out of existence by the satanic events about to happen. New millennium has heralded the deadliest period of human history. Beware, the present ungodly style of living does not sink with nature. When nature hits back, it will be an instance of terrific fury being unleashed on man and earth. When man dare not correct his folly, nature will. Surely so. Man has to reverse his lifestyle from the negative downward sweep to the upward positive mode. Only Yoga Vidya can be of real help here, since this technique is divided by nature. Let man go back to nature with fortitude and in his blessed attempt, nature would surely rush to his aid. Yogi Achyuta has unraveled the secret doctrine of yoga, a very ancient one at that, and offered it to mankind as none did during the last 3,000 years. If man does not heed the advice now, he will have to regret it later, but then surely it will be too late. Let good sense prevail. The ten sadhakas profiles. The ten tapaswins. Now we present the real heroes of Global Tapoja Project 2003. Ten heroes, including one woman, stand apart brilliantly in the multitude of mediocrity. 
10 junior sadhakas of our ashrama who took to tapas faltering in the beginning but gained confidence only after getting amazing results for themselves. Tapas, one should know, is painful to sit for hours without movement. Let me ask you a simple question. Have you any time sit quietly for 30 minutes without the slightest movement? Try it if you want and you will be surprised at your inability. Of course, we have not trained our bodies that way. Neither were the bodies of these ten sadhakas trained earlier. Tapas and meditation is viewed suspiciously in India. Indian family people are scared of the prospects of their family men taking sannyas or running away from family life. Many in India fear asceticism, but then we too are scared of asceticism. We stay away, stay away from it. So no one needs to have any doubts in this respect. The ten tapas winds that you are seeing sitting in tapas are very ordinary individuals and there is nothing special to report about them. But what is special about them? Their ability to put in very hard work. They have weathered criticism from the proximate society. Strangely, even the fellow sadhakas were strongly dissuading them from doing tapa and tapa for a longer duration. Their attitude, perhaps, is that if, they, if I cannot do, you should not do it either. Many have committed in abusing them. At this turn should like rock and train trained themselves vigorously during pain and suffering and other privations. Many have wept in Japan punish themselves when their limbs did not obey them. I was very harsh also with them, uncompromising and unsparing. Should I say sorry for them? No, absolutely no. On the other hand, I am proud of them and Lord is pleased with their commendable efforts. In this age of Kali, life's fulfillment is taken to mean eating, drinking, merrymaking, sex and money, whereas these brave individuals were slogging in tapas and meditation. Blessed indeed they are, for they have entered the hallmark of history. These ten sadhakas are sitting for eight long hours without any movement before the cameras, microphones and powerful lights. And also the technicians handling the equipment are also there. They are not to get distracted and they do not. That is the training they have received. Now, let us present them individually to you. Let us salute them for, for such a feat may not be possible for many to do. Now one, Uppara Ramalingappa. He was born on 1st August 1955 at Adoni, Karnal district, Andhra Pradesh. He took Upadesha from Swami Jaitetha in the month of February 1989. He is a become graduate, married with two male children. He came from economically poor family, but now 
He has stabilized in all aspects of life. He was one of the very few who were tickling us to start the course that would train them into sitting longer in Japa. He is a Upadeshaka today, that is, he is permitted to initiate others. He has attended intensive leadership training course nine times. He has improved on all fronts and is quite popular with the Asramites. All the members of his family are doing Japa. Second, yes, Seshigiri. He was born on 1st of June 1958 at Alur near Adoni, Karnal district, Andhra Pradesh. He took Upadesha from Sri Ramana in the month of November 1987. He is a graduate, married with the two male and one female children. His financial condition is critical. Even a bare living is one difficult. No property and no steady job either. At the same, he maintains a peaceful demeanor. His calmness and smile is legendary. Though being nagged around, he never loses his composure. Hard lives could have made others given up sadhana, but Seshigiri is proved otherwise. He remains a good tapaswin and he is Upadeshaka also. He has attended ILTC training nine times. Third one, Nirubhavi Jayamurti. He was born on 25th June 1951 and got Upadesha on 23rd August 1993 from Lakshman Swami. He is a double graduate and he is a teacher by profession. He is married, having two male and two female children. We are very happy to report that all the members of his family do japa pretty well. His one son is in the group of ten tapo vijaya sadhakas. It is a blessed family since all are doing japa without break. He comes from an agriculture background or belongs to a tiny village called Hulikere near Jagalur, Downgari district, Karnataka. He is an ideal man, truthful, straightforward, dedicated to the asrama and helpful to others. He is Upadeshaka and he has attended nine ILTC training courses. Four, Bharati. She was born on 20th November 1954, now a resident of Hyderabad. She got Upadesha on 20th September 1889 from Swami Sitaram. She is married and have one male and two female children. She has studied up to seventh standard. She has a mind of a child and the wisdom of an old lady. Even when heavy responsibility of running the home are stupendous, she has not lost the zeal and enthusiasm for Japa. She has made progress tremendously despite interruptions. She is always in the Japa mood where she is otherwise engaged in ordinary affairs. Truly a lady with great potentialities. Fifth, G. Devendrappa. He is a wonder boy of tapas. He can sit in meditation not for hours but for days. Born on 1st June 73 and got Upadesha on 8th January 2000, he became steady in Japan. 
the mother used to wake him up at night and made him sit in japa while keeping vigil outside a great lady and a great act he could not complete his degree having failed repeatedly but when the question of meditation comes he tops the list of practitioners he is simple innocent and service minded his higher senses have blossomed and he could see the things and events as none of others could do he now needs great control and guidance he has attended three iltc trainings he comes from jagalur six nj manjunatha he is the son of jayamurthy reported earlier he was born on 8 june 81 and got ubhidesha in the month of february 1997 from arhit mankar he is a bsc student and have attended six iltc trainings his is a classic age of struggling wanting to achieve something great in japa he is not even 23 years old but god got entry into the poja group a great future awaits him seven shivananda gadigi he is born on 5th june 1952 and come from an agriculture family he got upadesha in the month of october 1972 and he is a bcom graduate he married with two male and two female children he has attended six iltc trainings he appears quite ordinary but possesses extraordinary grit and determination always quiet and always sincere his progress in japa is commendable he comes from roan gadag district karnataka chepur purandhara chari he is born on 24th july 1959 and got ubhesha on 6th october 1993 he is married with one male and two female children he attended seven iltc trainings he is a rmp doctor and his economic status is poor he is married with one male and two female children he has attended seven iltc training his life is life of struggle get his study with japa he comes from nalgonda andhra pradesh nine shankarappa katarke he was born on 1st june 1963 and got ubhidesha in 1979 from n ramanna he is married with one male and one female children he is a teacher by profession and his economic status is poor he has attended five iltc trainings and the last one hanumantaraya he was born on 5th december 1952 at a village in anantapur district he took upadesha on 23rd december 1973 from swami sitaram basically he is an agriculturist having studied only up to sslc married and has one son this is a typical case of person who deviates from the path of yoga because of personal problems such people forego both sadhana and mental peace but fortunately raya suddenly took u turn and became a good sadhaka he has made significant progress in one year and gained entry into the team of tapovijaya 2003 well these are the 10 heroes 
one common element noticed in all of them is that they have lots of problem in life with full of struggle tension family discord and many problems however their beauty lies in overcoming all of them when the question of sadhana comes many falsely believe that sadhana can be carried on wonderfully when their life is free from all the problems is it possible to find a man without problems we have to accept life with warts and all the poor man can inherit the kingdom of god but not the rich and the robust one has to find life in the struggles of life the ashrama loko explained please look at the drawing of the figure called om the figure is drawn by lord yogi achyuta himself it appears beautiful dynamic asymmetrically symmetric it stands unique as it arrests our attention the figure symbolizes the creation of the cosmos and the very beginning of it the explanation is given below one the dot called bindu this signifies moola chetana the original power out of which everything is created it is also called linga or paramatma second the space between dot and semi circle it is a buffer zone where nothing can penetrate nothing nothing and nothing even the minor gods cannot have access to this space and third the semi circle it is the greatest protective area of light generated by the action and reaction of prana and vayu light here means jyoti the originator of all light and agni and fourth the open space below the semi circle matter in all its four states are found here the four states are the solid liquid gaseous and the plasmic state of matter it spreads in all directions excepting the north all objects are born here and fit the figure resembling three the figure three it symbolizes adi purusha or adi deva the first born he is yogi and he creates the cosmos then six the tail attached to the figure three this can be taken to mean the connection of the universe with the adi purusha at the nabhi level it is the center part nabhi means the navel in man and woman then seven the rays from the dot the creative energy flows out from him in the state of ananda or divine bliss the act of creation is not intentional but just takes place and this is the mystery of om it is taken to mean that om is absolute whose ananda results in the beginning of creation it is this om that is to be taken as absolute and meditated upon to the question on what should one be meditated upon it is clearly stated in the upanishads that tapasvins 
meditate upon this Om, which is the starting point of everything. Perhaps it's a matter of wonder that here philosophy seems to be more concerned with cosmology and astrophysics rather than metaphysics or epistemology. Surely, real philosophy transcends these spheres. And philosophy verily should not be just verbal jugglery. There is as yet another meaning of Om. The Om which is called Pranava is different. The sound that emanates from the movement of pranam is known as pranava. It is clearly to be understood as sound. It is produced in pranayama. The sound is magnetic and charismatic, so much so that the entire organism becomes one with pranava that is being produced within the body. This sound is taken as a sacred, sacred syllable. Note the situation under which the sound is produced. The occasion is the actual journey of pranam accompanied by manas towards the abode of Atman. It is like the sound of the marriage band and the marriage is about to be solemnized. It is both the joyous occasion and the sacred bond is being established between Atman and Pranam. It is thus that Om is taken as a sacred syllable whose listening grants one with merit and benediction. Therefore it is so that on every significant occasion, be it a marriage, naming ceremony, or even a funeral procession, each mantra is preceded by the sound of Om. Thus Om is universally chanted. Every occasion is started and every occasion ends with Om. Life in fact starts with Om and ends with Om. Om Shantihe.